When I was 15 and heard the song Iron Man, my life changed. And when I heard that voice, and when I heard these songs of alienation and this crushing guitar power, that was my shit. And I've been into Ozzy Osbourne ever since. I got all the Sabbath records, all the Ozzy records, all the bootlegs. Greatest rhythm section in rock and roll was Bill Ward and Geezer Butler. If I ever saw those guys, I'd be <laughs> all over the place. So anyway, imagine my elation several weeks ago, slaving away at band practice, and we get a phone call from management, and uh, manager says, hey, you want to play some shows with Ozzy? Uh, let's see. You know, duh, what do you think? So I go, we are there, click. How many nights have I put O-Z-Z-Y on my knuckles with, with a Sharpie? God, if I had a nickel for every single night, it is the awesome thing to do when you play festivals and you have to do all this press. Like, uh, Henry, so um, do you like to play the festivals? Yes, yes. I do. <laughs> and weeks later, boom, we're in Florida awaiting our first gig at the Enormo Dome with the Oz Man. And we're sitting in our dressing room, which is a locker. And I'm thinking, God, maybe we'll get to like smell Ozzy. Maybe I'll get like to, to touch him. Or like, maybe I'll get a glimpse of him as he goes to the stage. You know, I, no way I'd ever get to meet him, of course. But you know, maybe I'll just get to, you know, s smell his hair care products as he, as he gets golf carted to the stage. <laughs> Door opens up, Ozzy walks in, no shirt and a cigar. Hello, uh, my name is Ozzy Osbourne. Can I hang out with you guys for a while? I run over to the couch, start pulling everyone's you know, backpacks off the couch. Throw, sit, 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 please, please. He sits down. Hey, man, I'm fucking honored you come on tour with us, man. You guys fucking rock out, man. Fucking honored to have you on tour. Fucking God bless you, man. If there's anything you need, man, tell me or my wife and we'll get it for you. Anything you need to be happy, man. We want you to have a fucking great time. We're so happy you're out with us. Was the stage okay? Are the lights okay? Is the PA okay? Anything you want changed, man, we'll do it for you. He's like this totally cool, down-to-earth kind of guy you'd meet in a bar. Doesn't really know where he is. You know, he's just like... <laughs> rock and roll. And he's just super sincere and super cool. He's exactly how I'd hoped he would be. And I'm checking out all his tattoos. I'm like, oh, whoa, there it is. Oh, ZZY, awesome. <laughs> and so we go out that night and we play. And the crowd, which I figure is going like, to tear the seats out and like, beat us to death with them, and we go out there and we do our, you know, kind of off time thing. And we get, <sighs> which means like, you know, rock power. And so we finish, I go, all right, thanks, good night. Ozzy Osbourne's coming up next. And we go off stage. 40 minutes later, change over, Ozzy hits stage. The roof is flapping. And you realize at that moment that is 12,000 people going like, I, I think I dropped a joint on the floor. Excuse me, do, do you know where the men's room is around here? Oh, uh, is there a band playing? <laughs> Times 12,000 is... <sighs> so I realized they didn't even know that we played. <laughs> Ozzy goes out on stage and does basically what he's done for like the last 25 years. It's like... the crowd go positively bad shit. They're holding up their lighters like with a, the... Yes. At our gigs, when someone holds up a, la a, a lighter, it means we've been jamming too long. It's like, free bird, free bird, pal. You're losing it. See the lighter? But this is like, you know... And the people love this guy brings people up on stage, puts his arms around them, they head bang together. It's awesome. And he plays his ass off. And um, I meet his wife, Sharon, who's also his manager, and she's really cool. And she says, uh, Henry, um, Rip Magazine wants to know if you want to interview Ozzy for the magazine. I'm like, interview Ozzy? Oh, yes. Tomorrow night, when the gig is done, 
You're going to come with me and Ozzy and the family. We're going to go to the airport. We're going to fly to this island that we're staying at called Amelia Island off the coast of Florida. You're going to get up in the morning, interview Ozzy, and then we have a limousine that's going to take you to your club date. Like, okay, so what, there's like a red eye that goes to Amelia Island? No, 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 this is our private jet. Let me get this straight. I'm going to fly on a private jet with Ozzy Osbourne. She goes, yes. She can see it coming. Yet, you know, male fantasy number 5,000. You know, she, she goes, oh my God, he's a fanboy. So I'm saying, like, oh, oh, oh. you know. And so the next night, we do our set. Ozzy does his set. After the show, me and Ozzy and Sharon and his kids get in the van and we go to the private airport. And we pull up and there's all these fanboys waiting at the gate holding their Ozzy records. I'm sitting in the, in the passenger seat up front. They don't recognize me. They think I'm his bodyguard. <laughs> they come up to the van, I, I look at them like, they're like, um, can, can we, um, get our stuff signed by, by Ozzy? Like, hold on, let me ask. <laughs> no, I'm like, just playing it. Like, Ozzy, you wanna sign some stuff? Yeah, man, whatever, man. You know, cool, you know, he's, he's really nice. Comes out, you know, he comes out of the van, people are like, whoa! <laughs> he signs their stuff, like, what's your name, man? Uh, uh, David, to David Big, you know, writing rock on Ozzy Osbourne, all these, you know, on, on their like 90 year old vinyl record, gives it back. You know, these guys always have their silver or gold ink pens. And he signs up all their stuff, shakes their hands, and I kind of like move towards them. They're all like, I go, that's enough. We have to go get the plane now. And they're like, oh, you're right, uh, cool. Uh, well, to tell, tell Mr. Osborne, we're really honored to meet him. Like, he's standing right there. You know, they have to, he has to come through me. I'm like, tell him. You know, like, Aussie man, you rule. Like, okay. And so, but at the same time, I'm going, God, I wish I had one of my Aussie records here so he could sign mine too. <laughs> hey, kid, can I borrow that cool gold ink marker? So we go out onto the tarmac, and there is the Gulfstream jet waiting with the Aussie logo on the side. Two uniformed pilots, black pants, white shirt, black tie, the gold epaulets, the, the cap, I mean, they look like pro pilots. Standing there like, good evening, are you ready to go to Amelia Island? They're totally like, hey. <laughs> and so we get on the plane and the assistant gives us each a Diet Pepsi. And Ozzy's sitting in a seat facing the cockpit and I'm sitting in a seat facing him. And for the next hour, I'm sitting this far from Ozzy, drinking a Diet Pepsi while he tells me Black Sabbath stories. <laughs> 60 minutes, the whole time. I just could not believe it. Sitting across, he got the little shades on. It was so cool. I get to the Four Seasons Hotel. They give me the key to the room. I go into this hotel room. I have never been in a place like this in my life. The bed is like a football field. Like, yeah! Dive on it, jumping up and down. These big ass cookies on your bed, condoms in the drawer, like stuffing all this stuff into my shit. And so, you know, the next morning, I did the interview with him. And the limo came, and they, you know, took me you know, across this, like, long bridge to the mainland, and they drove me, like, an hour to my club date, and the next day we caught back up with Ozzy, and it was the coolest man. It was so cool. And it was total fanboy story, just... And I... That now you know what I'm like.